Hello again, everyone. This is a follow-up video to the video that I posted about uh, testing papers in this little fountain pen friendly notebook that has several different kinds of papers to test. So I did a lot of tests on camera for the papers that are in here, but I did more tests off camera for this bundle of different kinds of paper. And I'm gonna show you the results of that. And there was some overlap between this notebook and this one. And so I just combined them and I didn't duplicate the same papers that were in here as are in this little, um, this little booklet. So I'm gonna put this aside. I will put a link below to the video where I, uh, where I tested the papers that are in here. And you'll see these again. <laughs> and I've done some additional tests and I'm gonna go over my thoughts on the various papers and uh, which ones I think are best. Um, uh, spoiler alert, there's no real surprises, I think, <laughs> in here at the end of the day. I mean, the, the good papers are kind of the papers that, uh, or that I think are the good papers, uh, are, are kind of the papers that most people know about. But in any case, I will show you uh, what I did. So this, uh, I also showed last time, these are all of the pens and inks that I used to test the papers. So I used uh, this Ranga Demo fountain pen with a platinum music nib in it. And this has Kobe number 57 hydrangea ink. Then I used this Pelican M800 brown stripe with a bold nib. It has linen toolbar Wenshan Puchong T ink in there. I uh, used this Pilot Custom 823 Amber with a medium nib that has Mont Blanc uh, Petrol Blue in it. And then I have this Twisby Diamond 580, uh, which is the Prussian Blue with a fine nib, and it has Organic Studios Aldous Huxley in that one. And then I have this Pilot Custom 92 Demo with a fine nib with Sailor's Sailor ink. And then I have this Pilot Custom 912 with an FA nib, which has diamine, or di yeah, diamine, <laughs> cherry sunburst. And then I have this Narwhal Porpita Navy pen that has the same diamine ink, but also has a different nib than what came on the Narwhal. I have an Estabrook Extra Fine nib. If you want to know more about why I chose these particular pens, I would look at the previous video because I went into a little bit more detail about that. This is uh, the last time you'll see this sheet. <laughs> so I just wanted to go through the pens that I had used real quickly. And I'm also gonna put all of these pens off to the side because really we don't need to be looking at those right now. Um, this is the paper that I used for this, which is, um, this is a pad of Tamoya River paper from Naname paper. And uh, I believe that this is still the old Tomoe River paper, which is the same old Tomoe River paper that was used, uh, that's, that's contained in this book and the smaller book. Uh, so I only tested that once in addition to writing this all out here. But anyway, that is the intro here. I'm gonna put that notebook off to the side. I'm just real quickly gonna show you this. So this is the notebook with um, all of these premium fountain pen friendly papers from Yamamoto paper. And uh, it has little sections with each of these. It has 18 different papers, but you're only going to see 16 different papers today. Um, and some of, and, and pretty much all of the papers that are in here are also in here. So I use these samples instead of this paper, which should be identical or the same anyway. Um, and I did not test the Tomoe River cream paper that's in here. I just have the regular Tomoe River paper. Um, the, the, the functionality is pretty much the same. It's just a different color. So I didn't go through that. And then there is a black paper at the end of this that I also did not test, but I tested everything else. So you'll only not see two of these. Um, and they're numbered on my little test sheets here. And really quickly, I'll just go through the papers that I did test. So the, the first one is Thin Paper by Coculio. There's Tomoe River, just plain. I did not do the Tomoe River cream, so that's not in here. The New Chiffon Cream Paper, Cosmo Air Light. This just has a number. It's 35 NFC Paper, Glassine Paper, 
half tone color 99 white paper, kin kaku den paper, blank paper, or I'm sorry, <laughs> not blank, they're all blank, bank paper, speak a bond, champion copy, typewriter paper, airmail bond, white paper. Uh, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce this one. Pacipede cream paper, perhaps. Eastery COC paper. And I think that Eastery is actually what this should have been, when I, which I thought was Eastly paper. So I'm pretty sure these are the same. So um, I just corrected the name on the paper here. Okay, Fool's paper. And then again, I'm not covering the black paper that's at the end. So you do get quite a few sheets of each individual paper because they're all pretty thin and they're divided by sections. And then each section has this cover paper here. Um, I am not gonna go through each of the little cover sheets and, and the information for the paper, but if there was something that I thought was really important that came off this sheet, I put it on the test sheet. So we'll now go to those and I'll show you. And I am going to end up sorting these towards the end into sort of the ones that I thought would not really work well for fountain pens uh, long term and those that I liked. And I might actually do that as I go. So this first one, and I'll, I'll bring each of these up to the camera. Let me see. Maybe I should zoom in a little bit as well. I don't want to zoom in too much because then you won't be able to see everything. Um, so this first paper is the Thin Paper by Kakuyo. So, uh, and this is part of the information that was listed in that notebook. It's used in Jaboon planner products. So if you have Jaboon Techo, this is what you're going to get in that. And also their idea notebooks have this. And no surprise, this was one of my favorites. Uh, so I went through with each of the pens that I showed you at the beginning and did a little cursive and block writing sample. I did some little curly cues and this, and then I went in and tested the dry time with uh, this particular pen and ink. This is the, I did this for all of them. So this is the uh, Pilot Custom 823 with the Mont Blanc Petrol ink. I figured I would do a medium pen just because that's probably what most people are gonna be using on paper. Uh, and this ink is not super wet, but it's not super dry. So I thought that was also a good one to use for dry times. And then these splotches here are all the ink, which is in this Twisby pen. This is uh, Organic Studios Aldous Huxley. I chose to do to use this ink as sort of a, an ink splotch on the paper. Basically, I just... Um, twisted the uh, back of this so I could get a couple of drops on the paper and then blew it around the page. And this is really so you can see the sheen on this particular color, because this Aldous Huxley color from Organic Studios is really the, the one color that I used that had some massive sheening. So I wanted to be able to show how, how the sheening would show up on the paper. And again, this thin paper by Kakuyo is beautiful. It uh, really shows the sheen. It, it Not as much as some others, I will say, but there was no bleeding in any of the writing. Uh, the dry time is actually fairly fast. I was pretty surprised. Um, this may be a tiny bit wet at 20 seconds. This is all in seconds. But it was mostly dry at 15 seconds, which I thought was pretty good. Um, and it handled, you know, fine nibs to broad nibs and all of that fine. The back, the only thing that's really bleeding through is this big giant ink swatch, but everything else is pretty good. I mean, you, you can see some of the thicker lines more uh, on the other side, but it's, it's pretty good. So this was one of my favorites. So I'm gonna put that in my stack. And of course, the Tomoe River paper <laughs> is, my, is one of my favorites, but I put down here no longer available and the reason why I said that is because this is the old Tomoe River paper that is no longer being made. Um, some vendors or sellers might still have stock of the old Tomoe River paper. This is specifically the 52 GSM paper. Um, oh, and, and interesting to note, the Kukuyo paper is also 52 GSM, GSM so the same as Tomoe River paper. Um, but it's no longer going to be made anymore. So anyone who has old stock, would it, when they run out of that, it's no longer gonna be available. I have talked about on the channel before how I'm not a fan of the new Tomoe River paper. I can definitely tell a difference. It is not, a, not as good in my opinion. 
Um, but one interesting thing that I found with this is this had the longest dry time of any of the papers that I looked at or that were in this bundle. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, it pretty much took 40 seconds with this particular ink and pen for uh, the ink to dry, which is a long time. Um, and you know, it, it shows sheen really well, but there actually were some papers that showed sheen better. So this is one of my favorites, but I'm gonna put it in a different pile because that is not available anymore. All right, so this next paper is uh, what's called New Chiffon Cream. And this is book paper, and it is used in the uh, Row Beaky notebooks, which uh, that, that's just a, a very slim notebook that uh, is for sale at several different stationers. Uh, I think it would fit in a narrow size traveler's notebook. I, I did not, I have not really, I have a couple of those notebooks and I have not uh, used it very much, but it's actually pretty good. The only place it kind of falls down is bleed through. Um, this is not bleed through. This, this was, um, I picked this up from another piece of paper <laughs> while these were drying. But here you can see with the thicker applications of ink, you do get a little bit of bleed through. So, so this, you know, even though it performed pretty well, there was no bleed on the actual uh, lettering on the right side. But, and it actually dried really, really fast. Um, it dried at almost five seconds, probably because it is so absorbent. Um, sheen did not show up all that great. I mean, here it showed up in this big sample, but in the actual writing with that pen, which is here, I could not see a lot of sheen. I think it just absorbs the ink a little too fast. So um, I would say that this one's probably in the middle. Um, it's it's fair, <laughs> is what I would say, as to uh, using as a fountain pen paper. Actually, let me let me put these in a different area. So this up here, I have my favorites. And then over here, I have sort of middle of the road, and then I'm gonna have another pile of just don't even bother. Uh, so uh, no surprise, this was one of my favorites. This is Cosmo Air Light, and I've already been using a Cosmo Air Light notebook for, for a while and testing out a lot of different pens. The colors show up really, really vibrantly. Uh, the dry time, although, you know, um, took about 25 seconds for this to dry, it's still better than Tomoe River Paper. The Tomoe River Paper took the longest, like I said. Um, sheen shows up really well. Uh, this is a micro-coated book paper. Actually, some of the ones that I liked the best were book paper, so that was kind of interesting. Um, there's not a lot of bleed through, even with this big splotch here, and I think that's probably because it's so thick. This is 75 GSM. This uh, chiffon cream paper is also 75 GSM, but look how much bleed through you have by comparison. So it's, it's this is the better paper. Um, so this is definitely one of my favorites. I'm gonna put it in that stack. Um, so this is one of the really thin papers that they included. This is a uh, Nippon paper, um, 35 NFC paper. Uh, Nippon paper is the company that makes it. This is 35 GSM, which is pretty, pretty thin. And it's almost like, um, uh, what's that stuff you bake with? <laughs> Uh, wax paper, but it's even thinner than wax paper. So uh, the sheen was just okay on this. There was a little bit of bleed when you got into these larger um, ink flow pens, like uh, the uh, the one with the flex nib and this giant music nib. They had a little bit of bleed, but not a whole lot. Um, and the dry time was actually surprisingly low. This is actually food grade oil resistant paper. So it's probably a little bit like wax paper. Um, I actually thought shading showed up really nice with the flex nib. Um, yeah, the ink splotch just showed up okay. I think my main issue with this is it's just really super, super thin. And you did have some bleed through uh, just a little bit, but you know, I, I think it actually bled through to my uh, writing mat on my desk. So I had to put a piece of paper under it when I was writing. Uh, this is not terrible. I would say that this is probably my middle of the road as well. If you're looking for a really nice thin paper, this is probably a good one, actually. 
Um, I kind of liked the feel of it when I wrote on it too. It was really smooth and um, it, it gets very crinkly. So if you like the crinkle when you, um, I'm not sure how watercolor would work on these. I did not test any of these with watercolor, just with fountain pen ink, but uh, it has a very nice crinkle to it. So if you like that, that would also work. So I'm gonna put that in my middle of the road category. Okay, so this is glassine paper. I was really kind of surprised to see this in there because I didn't think that anyone would recommend glassine paper for fountain pens, but um, it actually works surprisingly well for, I would say, these two pens, where this was the Pilot uh, Custom 92 in fine, and this is the, um, the Twisby with a fine nib. So fine, fine, um, fine pens will probably work fine, <laughs> uh, but you're going to have a lot of bleed through. I had a ton of bleed through and, and it looks like you'll have bleed through even with, uh, the finer nibs. I definitely had to put something under this. Uh, when you get up to here with the music nib, it's, it got completely blurred. You could see it at the beginning, but then once it dried, it was kind of blurred. I would put this, and, and actually, one thing I was really surprised about is it dried in five seconds, pretty much all of it. Um, <laughs> so, I'm, but notwithstanding, I just think this would be really hard to write on. Um, it does have that crinkle, but you know, so did the prior paper, and I think that one was a little bit better. I'm actually gonna put this in my don't bother pile. Uh, I think glassine paper has its purpose, but fountain pen writing, I, I really just really don't see it. So then we have this, which is called a uh, number eight half tone paper, color 99 white paper. So this was used for envelopes. And actually I quite liked this one. This one was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, the only issue is it doesn't show sheen all that well in the writing. Um, and pens showed up much thinner than, than normal. So if you look at, um, Let's, let's look at the Cosmo Air Light. If you look at the line weight of all of these pens, these are all the same pens and they look much finer on this paper. And this paper is really, really slick. So, um, so it did have a little bit of a longer dry time, 20 seconds, dry by 25. Um, uh, but like I said, this is used for envelopes. I, I would think that this would be okay. I'm gonna put this actually in the middle of the road category just because it did, it was very nice and smooth to write on, but you could get some pen skips and that sort of thing, because I think it might be a little too slick. And this is pretty heavy paper. It's 81.4 GSM. Um, no bleed through though, probably because of its thickness. Uh, but again, I'm gonna put that in the middle of the road category. And then this paper is called uh, number nine Kin Kakuden paper. And although this paper seems really, really nice, um, and one of the good things is, is that this is in one of my don't bother piles, and I'll tell you why, uh, but it's no longer available. So you don't really need to worry about, about it all that much. Uh, it took a long time to dry. I would say, you know, even at 25 seconds, it might've needed a little bit more. Um, although I think some of what you're seeing is this little spot that got on the back there. I think it pretty much was dry at 25 seconds. Um, the ink just soaks in. It's not a very pleasant writing experience. There's a, there's a texture to the paper that I, I personally don't like. Um, it's both like slick and textured, which is kind of a strange combo. I think this would be really great as an art paper. Um, I'm not quite sure what kind of art materials you might want to use on this, but it, but I think it one, they said it might've been handmade, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's obviously not handmade, but, um, and, and you got some skips here with the larger nibs. I, I would just would put this in the don't bother with this paper for fountain pens. If you find some of this paper and you like it for other things, I think it would be good, but yeah, I'm going to put it in the don't bother pile, which like I said, is pretty good. It's a good thing because it's no longer available. Okay, and so this is the bank paper, and I did talk about the bank paper last video, which I linked below. Um, there, there are pluses and minuses to the bank paper. It has a little bit of a texture, but it's not too terrible. 
Uh, the color shows up very differently on bank paper. You can see that this purple showed up completely differently and a lot of these other colors showed up, especially this one showed up lighter. This is the Cosmo Air, which I'm kind of using now as the, as the gold standard over here. Um, I mean, I thought this was just okay. I'm gonna put this in the middle of the road pile. Uh, sheening showed up somewhat well. I, I'm gonna put it in the middle of the road, but I, I did not like the writing experience all that much on this one. So I'm gonna put that there. This is a uh, Spica Bond paper, which is normally used for checks. I personally found that this paper had too much of a tooth to it to be enjoyable. Um, I think in the little description in the larger book, it said uh, it has something like it has a lovely textured feeling when you write with it. I personally did not like that. Uh, it shows colors okay. There's not a lot of bleed. Um, it's it's just was not my favorite. I, I'm going to put this in the do not bother pile, but it but it probably could go in the middle of the road category too. I just I just didn't really like the feeling of writing on it. Okay, so this next one is uh, Champion Copy Paper, which is a 35 GSM, so very thin copy paper. Uh, it's super thin, but I actually really liked this one. Um, it's uh, They said it was blueprint paper because it has to have certain qualities to be a blueprint paper. Uh, it can also be used for letterpress and offset printing. But I thought most of these pens showed up pretty well. There wasn't too much bleed through other than this big swat... Um, swatch of ink here. I, I, I actually really liked this. If I was going to be using a small um, or a, th a thin paper, this is probably the thin paper I would use. I just realized I didn't show you the back of the prior two, but I'll show you that in a second. Um, so this actually goes in my favorites pile. So I suppose this is a surprise, this champion copy. Um, it goes in my favorites, but it's not something that I would use every day. Um, Sheening shows up really nicely. Uh, I actually really liked the feel of the uh, of the flex nib on here. It has a little bit of a longer dry time, but not not crazy. Um, so I'm gonna put that in my favorites pile. But again, that's not sort of an everyday use thing. Um, and here's the underside of both the Spica Bond and the bank paper. So the bank paper I put in my um, you know, just okay pile, there's not as much bleed through as there is with the Speak a Bond paper. So that's another reason why the difference there in my um, categorization of those. So uh, this is another one that is typewriter paper. So this one I also enjoyed, but I did not like it as much as the copy paper. Uh, it's a little thinner. It's 27.9 GSM, which is super thin. It had a longer dry time. And the color was not as vivid on this one as this other paper. Uh, you can especially see that here in the purple where it looked a little bit faded, I would say. Um, sheen showed up a little better on this one as well. Um, it does have that nice crinkly quality, but you know, stick with typewriter paper for, for the typewriter. I'm gonna put this in the middle of the road. Um, it did have a little bit more bleed through as well than that champion copy paper, but that's probably because it's so darn thin. Okay, so this one, uh, this <laughs> was kind of interesting. So this is airmail paper, which is meant for letter writing. Um, it's basically a stationary paper. I really did not like the texture of this paper. It has, I don't know if you can see, it has lines, vertical lines that go through the paper. Um, and I really did not like how that felt on the pen. Um, I mean, all the inks showed up okay. There's a little bit of bleed here on this particular ink uh, in the broad nib, but it's strange that there wasn't on this one. Um, dry time's pretty good. I just, because of the texture and bleed through is not too bad on the back. You've really only got it here. And for that one ink, which is interesting. Um, I, I'm gonna put this in the middle of the road pile, but uh, I really don't like the texture of it, so. <laughs> This may be, someone who likes a textured paper and like a very specific textured paper may end up liking that one. Um, so I suppose this was actually a surprise as well. So I lied, there are some surprises. This is the uh, Pacipede Cream paper, which is 66.3 GSM. 
I actually really, really liked this paper. It, it had a really nice smooth texture, which was kind of a joy to write on. It did have a longer dry time, but that's probably because it does have a coating on it. This is another book paper. Um, the bleed through was pretty good. The only one you're really seeing too much is this big splotch and that's that I would kind of expect with anything. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's good. I'm actually going to put this in my favorites and, um, we'll move on and then I'll show you those again at the end. So here are, um, a couple of others that were in both the, uh, the little booklet that I had and the larger booklet. So both of these are recommended for medium or fine nibs, uh, nothing above that. Although um, I don't like the Eastley paper <laughs> because of its sort, it has a tooth that I didn't really like. Um, although it looks like, no, sheeting shows up better on the OK Fools. I think I prefer, I, the OK Fools was actually one of my favorites. It did have a little bit of a longer dry time. Uh, I think it was dry at around 20 seconds. Uh, the colors, uh, th there's a little bit more of a crisp edge to these than to these. There's a little bit of bleed on the larger things, but that would make sense since they're recommending um, medium or finer nibs on there. Um, but I like to be able to use a, a broad range. So this was actually one of my favorites as well. This one, um, I'm going to, I'm actually going to put this in the don't bother pile because, because of the bleed and uh, there was a little bit of bleed onto the back. This one, um, yeah, there was a little bit of bleed here. So that's interesting too, but I like the feel of this paper better than this one. Um, yeah, I just, I just really wouldn't, I wouldn't go for this paper <laughs> just because of the texture. So basically all we have in the do not bother pile is the Eastley, the Spica Bond, the Kin Kakuden, only because it would not be good for fountain pens, in my opinion, and the Glassine paper. Um, and these, you know, depending on your preference, these could easily probably go in the Just OK pile, but I, they ended up here. The Just OK pile <laughs> has airmail bond paper, which I might put in the Don't Bother pa uh, thing. Um, typewriter paper, which, you know, is kind of nice for a thinner paper. Uh, bank paper, halftone color, uh, Nippon paper, and chiffon cream paper. And, um, you know, all of these have their pluses and minuses, but these I, are, are not really ones that I would write home about. Uh, I'm also going to put aside the Tomoe River paper because uh, that is not going to be a, a long-term viable option. So I'm going to put that over there too. So what we're left with here is kind of an interesting combination of papers. <laughs> so um, I would say that, you know, these three are probably the surprises. This is the champion copy paper, which I would say would not be for everyone and, um, you know, has a very specific purpose for if you want a very, very thin paper and you like this crinkly texture. I thought it wrote, writing on it was very pleasurable in my, in my limited experience here. I haven't done long writing on it. Um, so that was that was one of my favorites. The OK Fools paper, which I actually thought was very, very nice, showed color nicely, um, didn't bleed too much. There was a little bit back there. Um, like I was saying, with this uh, really thin paper, there really wasn't any bleed, so that was kind of amazing. The other surprise one was this uh, Passipede Cream paper. Uh, it has a little bit of a longer dry time, but so I, I think pretty much all of these do. All of these were around 20 seconds for dry time, I think. Yeah, I think the, the Kukuyo paper probably had the, the lowest dry time at around 15 to 20 seconds. Cosmo Air, 20 to 25 seconds. Um, 20 to 25 seconds is kind of where all of the rest of these are. I think it's because the smoother and more coated your paper, the longer the dry time. And that's the paper that I like is um, the smoother paper. So I think that I'm not sure about the champion paper or the Passipede cream paper, how available they are, but I've definitely seen OK Fools around. I'll have to take a look. Um, but but Kukuyo paper, you're, you're going to be getting that anytime you get a Kukuyo notebook. 
and Cosmo Air Lights, which is now becoming very available in uh, a variety of uh, places and uh, bound options. So, uh, so I think these are all really good. And I think that, you know, quite frankly, I thought the thin paper by Kakuyo was just as good as the Tomoe River paper, which kind of explains why I like writing in my, in my, um, Kukuyo planner, my Jubon Techo. Um, I thought it was just as good, quite frankly, and dried faster. So, um, so yeah, so there you go. If you have some questions about any of these papers or anything, or if you have additional tests you'd like me to do on these papers, let me know. Um, I, may, I might not always be able to get to your request, but I will do my best. Um, uh, and like I said, these three papers, I'm not quite sure of the availability, the Champion Copy, OK Fools, and Pacipede Cream. Uh, if I can find sources for these, I will put them below. But for now, I'm just going to put the uh, fountain pen um, test book, a, a link to that larger book. And then in the video that I link below, you'll have a link to this little one. So I think that's all I had for you today. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. I, uh, If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And I hope to see you next time. But in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.